Pro Group Management. Workers' Comp that works for you. Welcome to Nevada News Megs on the broadcast today. We're talking economics with Eugenia Larmore. She's the president of EK Economic Consultants here for the whole show on an all new Nevada Newsmakers. Hello, is this D&D Roofing? Yes, it is. How may I help you? You did such a great job on my roof. May I speak to the owner? I am an owner. Oh, can I speak to your supervisor? Sure. How may I help you? I love your work. May I speak to the owner? I am an owner. We're all owners. Well, that's why at D&D we work so hard to keep your home safe and sound. Oh, no wonder. D&D Roofing and Sheet Metal. Local, employee-owned, here for you. Retail's impact on Nevada's economy? Enormous. 8,600 businesses, large and small, employing 145,000 workers. And last fiscal year, retail paid tax on nearly $60 billion in sales. We're the Retail Association of Nevada. We support retail, we help it grow, and we mean business. R-A-N-N-V dot org. Pro Group Management specializes in providing industries with the necessary components to satisfy and exceed workers' comp requirements. Every business has unique needs and specific regulations. Pro Group Management stays ahead of the curve, providing up-to-date services to keep your industry in top form. Discover how we simplify your tasks, improve efficiency, and reduce expense to keep you moving in a positive direction. Pro Group Management. Workers' comp that works for you. Truck drivers are some of the hardest working people you'll meet, delivering over 70% of America's freight and 92% of Nevada's. When there's a natural disaster, they're delivering critical supplies to help those communities recover and rebuild. Every sector of the economy and our nation's military rely on truck drivers. So let's take a moment to say thank you. On the open road or city streets, our truck drivers are rolling to make our economy and our nation stronger. Trucking moves America forward. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no-holds-barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we're delighted to welcome back to the program Eugenia Larmore. She's a PhD, an MBA, and president of EK Economic Consultants. Pleasure to have you back on the program. Thank you for having me. So we have you back here because once again, Sam is confused about the ec economics. Um, let's start out with $6.7 billion coming to the state um, from the federal government's latest plan. And all of our government leaders are going around the state on quote listening tours to see what the public should, uh, or thinks they should do with this money. Um, what are your thoughts about the effects of having this kind of additional money coming into the state? Well, obviously receiving federal money at the state level is always a good thing if, uh, as you know, economists would like to see efficiency. We want to see this money spent exactly where it needs to be to help any impacts, lasting impacts of COVID, to help build infrastructure, to really do the things that have either needed to be done or need to be done now because of the COVID impacts. But again, the important thing here is make sure the money is spent well and efficiently and it is spent because now we're seeing a little bit of well quite a bit of talk at the federal level of pulling the money back if it is not spent so and and isn't that the conundrum um, with government money period which is um, you're allotted a certain amount in the budget if you don't spend that amount then your budget is cut the following year um, to, so therefore there is this desire on the behalf of bureaucrats to spend every last penny. Uh, they're kind of like political consultants. If you don't spend the money, you don't get paid. Absolutely. And, and you know, a lot of issues with the government is that once it's spent, it becomes an expectation. And then you need that, that spending in the years that follow as well. It doesn't just go away in that first year that is spent. So it, it, does, it creates a lot of inefficiency where money is just spent because it's there and it needs to be spent because you don't want to look like you don't need it. So well, to go along with that point, um, so does it behoove us to spend that money in whatever way we spend it for one-shot type deals or one or two-year type deals 
rather than um, you know employing lots of people that you're going to then end up having to pick up the tab for that and now your state budget is going to increase by billions of dollars. Well I, again is it are we talking is it more efficient or is it the best way to spend the money quickly so it looks like we desperately needed that money to be spent in the first place. So uh, again we, we want I in some ways we want to again provide the money to the businesses and to the families that have been directly impacted by COVID. There is no argument there, there has been such an impact. Sure. But that impact hasn't been felt across the entire state, across all of the industries, across all of the households. So it's important to really spend the money where the money is needed. If we're look not if, but to, to have that impact, the, the, the COVID specific impact. But obviously it's more efficient and it's better to create lasting programs. But again, lasting programs need buy-in and f future support from whatever funding source that will support it once the federal funding source runs out. So that makes it difficult and a lot less attractive. But the, the benefit, the long-term benefit is obviously much greater of having longer term programs. All right. but. Um you know, when we last spoke, which is probably a year or so now, um, you know, uh, do you have concerns um, that we, we have so much money pouring in, in in so many different ways from the federal government um, to the states, um, and a lot of it directed to people who don't need it? Um, did it surprise you in any way, or is it just the inefficiency of a federal government um, that we weren't able to pick out the specific people, industries, etc., that needed the money versus we send everybody two thousand bucks. Surprised? Not necessarily. I just I don't think we can expect that kind of efficiency that quickly. And frankly, from the federal level, I mean that we're asking for quite a bit of detail. But it is unfortunate. Um, I the the very first round of the stimulus I received you know, a small amount that went straight into a, ch uh, a savings account. That created no benefit, no economic benefit. It's still sitting there, didn't really do anything. And I, I wasn't you know, one of the households that really needed the help. So basically, if you want to be honest about it, it was wasted. That, that, is, that is the downfall of this one size fits all, we're just going to issue checks to everybody. Because even when you issue those checks, even to certain income levels, people in those income levels were not affected equally. Even in the state, you know, we still have a nine point, some, uh, nine point I believe, six percent unemployment in the Vegas area versus 4.5, but four and a half percent unemployment in the Reno area. We cannot treat the, the entire state of Nevada equally. We cannot treat, treat every industry and every household equally. We really need to get down to the details of who's really suffering and who really needs that help. Otherwise, we're just diluting the money and basically wasting it at some point. Um, I, I just came up with an interesting comparison, to me at least. Um, you know, with the vaccines, right now we are seeing um, basically threats from government, whether it be federal or state, um, to get vaccinated. If you don't get vaccinated, then you're gonna have costs because you're gonna be tested and you're gonna have to pay for those tests yourself. And you're not, you know, in New York, they're saying you can't eat inside of a restaurant, you can't go to a museum, you can't go to a, a show if you're not been vaccinated and in some cases wearing masks as well. And we're seeing the results fairly rapidly of people now lining up to get vaccinated. Uh, because they don't want to have those, those freedoms taken away from them. And also a lot of people um, who over the last few months were able to go to the gym and go to other places without masks who are now pretty irritated that they are being forced to wear masks again. So we're seeing a push towards vaccination. On the other hand, you have the unemployment rate, especially in Southern Nevada because of the lack of diversification. And that's not a criticism. The, the, Tourism industry is a vast industry and mm. requires a lot of workers. Um, but these additional payments from the government, um, it just seems, um, you know, we had a person on the program a couple of months ago, it was James Settlemeyer actually, um, who said that you should take that 300 bucks a week extra and put it towards an incentive to go back to work rather than to stay on unemployment. Your thoughts? Agreed. Absolutely agreed. I think, I think there is quite a bit to be done 
even from a non-financial level with retraining and rematching, we're obviously seeing a significant shift with now there's quite a bit of talk with the COVID, COVID disrupting um, the logistics and supply chains of onshoring or nearshoring and bringing a lot of the manufacturing and transportation back to the U.S. That's going to shift the demand for jobs really from we're realizing we, we may need as, not need as many service jobs as we, uh, you know, the personal service, the restaurants and food and beverage jobs as things shift a little bit more online with DoorDash, um, things like and that. And robotics. And robotics, absolutely. Um, and we, the demand is now shifting to a different kind of jobs. It is our, jo our job and our responsibilities to retrain and to make sure the people know where the opportunities are. And can, I mean, many of the jobs that we've done some studies for the manufacturing industry, um, that a lot of those are on the job training. So if we can reconfigure our workforce and make sure that the people who are unemployed and maybe are potentially long-term or permanently unemployed in that industry can shift to other industries, really as, as an economy that will benefit all of us. So that, and of course, the incentives. We, I think there's quite a bit of disincentive in, well, I'm just going to wait it out, wait till the store that I've been working for, the restaurant that I've been working for reopens and collect unemployment in the meantime versus take an effort and find another job. So and, and let's make the point that you can't blame people who are at the lower end of the economic scale uh, for taking 300 bucks a week extra on unemployment and not going to what they may perceive as a, a crappy job. Um, and you know, but, but now the other side of the coin, and, and I totally agree with everything you're saying, but here's the other rub, which is the reason that manufacturing left the United States was it was a lot cheaper to manufacture in China and then Cambodia, Laos, wherever you want to say, um, that were countries where um, manufacturing could be done, uh, but a lot cheaper than the United States. If you return manufacturing on this level back to the United States for a host of reasons, um, you're going to see inflation in just about everything because of that, are you not? Absolutely. You are, and you know, as a country, we, we really need to decide where we want to be. Do we want to manufacture things? Do we want to have higher wages for our employees, or do we want incredibly cheap products? That we want all of those things. We want all of those <laughs> things. <laughs> There's no argument there. Yeah, we, we want everything as cheap as possible. We want everybody to make a lot of money. And, and another part of that is, you know, um, we have seen, and, and I'm talking specifically about the Reno area, but I'm sure it's not that far off in Las Vegas as well, um, that as people are struggling to find employees, they are paying way above $15 an hour to get those employees. The result is that everybody is having to raise prices to match that increase in wages. And if they can get the employees at this point, they are happy to do it. But those wages are never going to go down, are they? They really are not. Um, especially in the Reno area, we really have a lot of competition from the manufacturing industry that creates, you know, that, that keeps driving wages. But it, it's very hard for wages once they're established to go down. What would have to happen is that we either, for some reason, we have an incredible drop in demand for employment or we have a huge inpour of new employment that comes in. So you, you, you'll create a supply or a demand shift to where you you just have too many employees in the area that may drop the wages somewhat but and that's not okay so let's let's be specifically about northern nevada and the reno sparks area which encompasses a lot larger region than just those two entities uh, probably somewhere in the order of what uh, half a million people at this point Probably a little bit more than that if, oh, we, if oh. we include the outline. I mean, we're right, really I'm, I'm including Fallon, Fernley, Carson Absolutely. City, all that. Um, so you have um, an influx of people coming in from California, um, older people selling homes, coming to Nevada, buying homes at a much lower price than they, would, that, than they sold their houses for in California. That's been going on forever. But you also have workforce where you're bringing in companies with their workforce there's not enough housing. You're 50,000 homes short over the next 10 years, and you're only building about 1,500 to, what, 2,000 homes at best. Um, and the companies that are here uh, in northern Nevada 
are companies that, that are tied to logistics, um, delivering items, um, uh, distribution centers. These are not businesses that go away in downturns in the economy. No. They in, don't fact, in fact, because of COVID, they actually went up. They actually, they experienced quite a bit of growth. And again, as I mentioned, this potential shift that everybody's talking about to onshoring will just make demand for logistics and manufacturing and warehousing increase that much more. All right, so then you're seeing again inflationary pressures, but how does this translate to inflation across the nation as a whole? Yes, you're gonna see inflation in the region, because um, I mean, I, I talk to a lot of companies and they tell me, you know, it doesn't matter what we're offering, we can't get employees. Or, or we're offering so much money that um, we can't make any money except by raising our prices and our customers won't go for that. Oh, the, the wage inflation across the country is is significant. We're seeing a lot, quite a bit of growth. Um, they're expecting um, the Congressional Budget Office is looking at about 3.5 percent increase in employment costs, which is a combination of wages and benefits, but primarily wages. So there, there's significant wage wage growth, and a lot of it is we're we're hearing even nationally there is labor shortages, and a lot of it is expected to be somewhat temporary and is COVID related as people, you know, with the schools reopening or however, whatever stages they're reopening at, there, that really created a, quite a bit of issue with childcare. We lost quite a bit of employment or available employees w through childcare issues. Obvi All right, let, so let's take a break there and come back and we'll talk about that because I think that to me it appears to be one of the biggest issues going forward is uh, figuring out childcare. So let's take a break. We'll be right back. More in economics after this. Get in on the Tamarack Casino's $175,000 Hidden Treasures Guaranteed Giveaway now through September 30th. Earn entries in the weekly drawings and win big during the two $35,000 grand prize giveaways. Your good times are at Tamarack Casino. Modern Boutique Ahern Hotel and Events Center in Las Vegas. Host meetings and events on two floors. Stay in luxurious rooms and suites. Unlimited branding opportunities. Regional Italian cuisine by Chef Mark Segrisi. Flexible event spaces. Full buyout options. Visit ahernhotel.com today. Get in on the Tamarack Casino's $175,000 Hidden Treasures Guaranteed Giveaway now through September 30th. Earn entries in the weekly drawings and win big during the two $35,000 grand prize giveaways. Your good times are at Tamarack Casino. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Eugenia Larmore. Uh, she is the president of EK Economic Consultants. So you brought up child care. Um, it seems coming out of this COVID deal, more so even than the Great Recession, that the cost of childcare um, has gotten to an insane level that doesn't make any sense for our country. And I, I'm not saying it hasn't been a problem for years, I'm sure it has been, but there was an example the other day um, that, that just said it so loud and clearly. Um, somebody working as an ENT making 17 bucks an hour paying 15 bucks an hour for childcare. There was a $2 benefit and that doesn't include lunch, gas, the rest of it. Why would you go to work when you're only making $2 an hour essentially? So, so what's the solution that you're seeing through corporations and, and, and smaller companies in terms of what they feel they need to do to make childcare more available and affordable for women and families? You know, I'm, I'm not sure, there, there's a, a lot brighter minds working on the child care issue, but the, this is definitely, if we are going to, as an economy, if we're going to continue to grow, and we, the, the issue with not having child care is we lose a, a potential source of employment, a potential source of GDP growth. So we're running inefficiently. Again, that economic inefficiency, we want to see everybody who's able to be employed participating in the economy. So when we lose a part of the workforce, it, it hurts all of us. It hurts everybody within the economy. So we, we sh that is definitely something we should be working at, whether at 
the, the, the public level or the private level, uh, but definitely a cost that we should all bear. Same thing with schools. You know, if you don't have a child, you always feel, you, you, you hear people saying, I don't have children, I should not be paying taxes for the schools. Right. Well, that's nonsense. It, obvious. And, and, but, you know, can we really bring child care to kind of the same level that... I think we have to. I, I mean, judging from, from what we're hearing, I mean, um, illegal child care um, is a thriving business in this country and has been for a long time. Um, if you want to find somebody who will take care of a half a dozen kids and they don't get caught um, and it's going to be at a much lower price, then, you know, sadly you're going to do it. Um, and all the problems that go along with that. Uh, but it seems, uh, you know, don't you feel that when taxes are targeted to a specific thing that it can't be taken away from, that people are more willing to pay that tax rather than just a general increase in taxes that we have no idea where it goes? Absolutely. I, I think every time there's a tax increase, I ask, where where is the corresponding cost? If you need to raise, say, let's say, sales tax, and you're you're saying you're going to generate a million dollars, where is the cost that you're trying to cover with that million dollars? Give me a line item of we're going to buy six fire trucks and hire four more fire persons. It's a lot easier for people to vote on the tax increase or a new tax that they know that it's going to a specific purpose rather than it's just going to go to a general fund. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I have to say that uh, you know we pay um, 30 cents a gallon more for gas in Washoe County because of the RTC gas tax. But when I drive around on really nice roads and see cones all over uh, the Reno Sparks area of RTC doing projects, you know, I'm fine with that. Let's take another break. We'll be right back. Everyone is talking about opioids, but they're not the only drugs that can be harmful if taken in large quantities or not as prescribed. You also need to be aware of side effects from anxiety drugs, muscle relaxants, sleep aids, and stimulants. Mixing prescription drugs with other drugs or alcohol can be dangerous. If you take an Ambien with a glass of wine, it may be enough to stop you from breathing. Prescribed drugs can be just as dangerous as illegal drugs. Take medications only as directed. The Do It Right guys at Nevada Heating have one mission. Your air conditioner breaks down today. We fix it today. Why sweat for days while your air is down when Nevada Heating can get the job done today and you can get cool again? For nearly 50 years, locally owned Nevada Heating has been getting the job done right. Call today at 323-5585 or see us online at nevadaheating.com. Dimitri Prine here for Design Outdoor. Are you a homeowner who's interested in remodeling or building a home? At Design Outdoor, we can show you how adding natural or manufactured masonry stone can add beauty and value to your home. And we refer only the best contractors. Our store and backyard are located at 11600 South Virginia, just north of DeMonte Ranch Parkway. Visit designoutdoor.com or call us at 851 9499 Hey guys, are you watching the game at a friend's or the bargain because you can't watch at home with your wife? Or worse, because she kicked you out and kept your couch, your flat screen, and your kids? What's the one thing a man needs when he loses a good woman? A good lawyer. And when he loses a bad woman, he needs a great lawyer. What makes a good woman a bad woman? You tell me. You're the one that can't watch the game in your own home. I'm men's rights attorney Marilyn York, and I represent men in divorce, custody, and family law matters. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Eugenia Larmore. She is the president of EK Economic Consultants. So we're seeing, you know, what's happening with the money coming in from the federal government from this first round. Um, but there's a second round, it seems, is coming one way or the other. Um, and that's trillions more dollars. Does that scare you? Yes. Why? Um, the, the first part of the, the, the one trillion dollars that they're talking about for infrastructure is something that we've needed for years. My, my issue is really how is this going to be funded. Um, there, there's talk, as we mentioned, about pulling back some of the unspent um, stimulus money from the states. There's talk about um, increasing tax rates on businesses and getting rid of some of the business tax loopholes. 
I, I just, I haven't seen good numbers as to whether that's going to be sufficient to cover the trillion dollars. Um, there may be some spending, even though with, with the, um, the, the debt cap coming up, that, that may be difficult to do. Um, but so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a secret. They're going to pass the debt limit ceiling. Oh, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty sure they will. They, they usually do. But um, I think it, I just, infrastructure is definitely something we need. We have aging infrastructure, but it's, I, I think coming at, at the time of kind of the overheating of the economy as it is, uh, we're, we're seeing issues with construction labor, issues with construction materials. Um, there's obviously concerns about inflation. We had 5% inflation increases in the last two months, if you analyze it, um, in May and June. That, 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 that's definitely a concern about what, what will it do about the economy in the future and how will it be funded? Well, and, and the second round of funding that's going to come um, is, is the one that's you know, going to be long term. And I guess w on our next program, we'll get a chance to talk more about that as we actually see what the package looks like. But thank you very much for coming in. It's always fascinating to hear from you. Thank you for having me. And we'll be right back. A bird's eye captures its surroundings at different heights. At Brian Culp of Photography, we can make your imagination soar over buildings, parks, cityscapes, and beyond. Brian's images tell the story and get the job done. If you need a new perspective to tell your story, contact Brian today. Brian Culp of Photography. Experience the bird's eye view at brianculpaphotography.com. Dad? Why are you learning? This place is great. Huh? You gotta try this. Wow, this stuff is great. People are gonna love it. Yes. Yes, they were. As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development, building community with every project, adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com. Tollsdevelopment.com. Take a look at Pro Group Management and see how your workers' comp requirements can be met head on. By taking a proactive approach, Pro Group can assure that your company is meeting or exceeding state and federal standards. As you move forward in your industry, Pro Group moves with you, simplifying regulatory tasks, clearing the way so you can get the job done and look to your future success. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. Don't forget another way of watching Nevada Newsmakers is to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Nevada Newsmakers on YouTube. We'll see you on the next broadcast.